Hello everybody, we're here with a very special guest today, Richard Louis, an American journalist. What brings you here in Albania, Richard? I'm here with the uh, U.S. Embassy's Speakers Program. Uh, the State Department puts this on and what they try to do is bring Americans uh, to places around the world to show that uh, we have different perspectives, we have different ideas, we come from different places. Uh, I'm here because uh, I've never been to the Balkans. Uh, and when they reached out to me uh, after doing a program on uh, journalism, I said yes, absolutely, because I've never been here and I've, I've uh, enjoyed myself completely. How did you find it, the Balkans, since you've never been here? Uh, so, it, don't laugh at me, uh, <laughs> but my first answer to that question has been pretty consistent. It's, it's clean, uh, <laughs> people are nice, uh, and as I've got to know more about uh, Albania, I found that it is, I'm going to be watching Albania very carefully. There's a lot of interesting ingredients uh, here uh, as this country moves forward. Uh, and I think uh, for that reason, uh, many folks uh, in, in, in North America and in Europe are watching Albania because of those great ingredients that are here. In Albania, it seems like digital is becoming a very important part of the Albanian media. Uh, every day we see a new website popping up and uh, these let's so let's say so-called medias are let's say in a race of uh, clicks yeah. and they write about uh, sensationalism yeah uh, in your opinion um, what can a journalist do to to make the difference journalism is many things one of it is about facts you know and relating facts finding facts and facts are really really expensive expensive in time and expensive in effort. Facts are not cheap. And so as journalists, because that's what you have to deal with, those bad actors that you're talking about will always be there. And you don't, I don't think that any day I get up and all of a sudden I can erase it, that I can turn on the faucet. For me it is, I get up every day, put my feet on the ground and I go, okay, what's my drop for the day? I propose that we don't say those who are on digital platforms, new to digital platforms, or have not done traditional media, are in new media instead, are not journalists. That was what was said 20 years ago, or 15 years ago, as digital journalism blogs, for instance, became more prevalent, a development of classes of journalists. You don't see that anymore. Blogs are, as journalists, create blogs are just as good. We have blogs in the United States that uh, old school, if you will, or traditional journalists have begun to, to go to. Uh, I was here in Vlora uh, yesterday where I got to meet a journalist who had been in the industry here in Albania for 20, 25 years. And what did he j just create? A digital news site. So I think these structures of what it means to be a journalist, what journalism is, is, is changing on the supply side. On the demand side, meaning we as people that consume news, it is up to us to be conscientious consumers. And when it comes to uh, investigative journalism, it looks like it's, it happens quite rarely in Albania as a, as a result of many factors like censorship or self-censorship. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, how important is for young journalists to go through all the, the difficulties that face in a, in a country like Albania? Journalism is, first of all, a tough craft. It is uh, tough for anybody for many reasons, one of which uh, y y y it's tough to get into the industry. Uh, number two, when you get into the industry, it's not easy to do well. Number three, everybody, I'd say everybody, many people want to get, in, get into that space. And because of that, you know, you will live a very difficult life getting to journalism. All right, so those are all the things that, in terms of what makes it tough, I think, for, pe for folks that are just leaving college or even entering into college to get into journalism. Uh, the question about how important is it? Because I think that's what you're really asking. How important is journalism? I think journalism is a, an indicator of a strong democracy, an indicator of a strong economy. If you look around the world uh, at those countries that have strong press, you're probably going to see a strong free market economy as well. 
because it reaches towards transparency. It reaches towards the idea of free speech. It reach, reaches towards the idea that we all have something to contribute. And I think in a free market economy, when we look at strong businesses at the highest and lowest levels, that ideology is what drives creativity. Which the idea of investigative journalism is a reinforcement of what the tenets of what uh, journalism is. So in, in places where there is difficulty, either through self-editing, either because of lack of, of good sources of information, doesn't necessarily mean you need investigative journalism. It means you need to be good journalists. Where I work, our investigative team is a small group. And for, for the largest provider of news in America, which we are, we, our investigative team is very small. So I would say to those who are interested in investigative journalism, don't see it as investigative journalism, see it as journalism. You need to be a good journalist. And that's the difficulty. And I know in new markets, journalism isn't always the most favored position. Look, I'm not loved in, in the United States as a journalist necessarily. I've been called lots of different things. You as journalists here in Albania also face the same perceptions. But you don't need to add any words to it. You're just a journalist and you work hard at it and you do the right things every day. How should today's journalists interact with social media? What are its advantages and pitfalls? Yeah, I think the pitfalls when you don't treat it as equivalent to all the other distribution channels, both traditional and new. So I treat social media as I would a print paper or as a digital uh, article, whether it's for NBCNews.com or MSNBC.com or CNN.com. So the pitfall is not treating it like anything else that we do as journalists. And so that's the pitfall. The, the great thing about social media right now is that it's a, a, an intimate, direct discussion of a story or topic with a reader, with a viewer. And uh, as a journalist with a long career, uh, what is your advice in handling, let's say, politicians' arrogance in the studio? Politicians aren't arrogant. What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, journalists can be arrogant too. I think the way to understand that is, with any guess, regardless of politicians or not, is stay on the facts and listen. So I'm always listening to every word. So it's not only a politician, it, it could be another journalist, it could be a, a CEO, it could be uh, an activist, it could be a murderer, it could be any of these situations. The rule is always this, listen and think. Now, as you prepare for an interview, there's a couple philosophies. One is, I lay out all my questions, and I go through them, and I think about them, and I edit them. The other one is, I just study, and then when I sit down in front of the person I'm about to interview, I just ask questions, right? Because that way I can react. There are those that believe the list is too limiting, right? It's just too structured. Because then what I'll do is I'll keep on looking at okay, that question, and then that question, and then that question. The other uh, uh, criticism of not coming in is it, with, with, a, with, a, with a list is that, well, then you're not forming a story for your viewer. That's the criticism of just having you know, no list of questions. And, and my proposal is that you, of course, do both. From your experience, uh, who are the most difficult people to interview? The most difficult would be the ones that are not themselves. And so what I try to do with interviewees or interviews is I try to be myself. And if you're not going to be yourself as an interviewee, then I'm wasting my time. But you try in the time that you've got, that you're allotted, to get to that soul and that brain. Okay. Thank you very much for being with us today. You bet. Thank you for everyone for watching.